Good evening. Our liturgy for this Sunday is getting more difficult to respond to in terms of its challenge. Last Sunday, we heard about the Beatitudes, and this is in fact the continuation of the Beatitudes Jesus was telling or teaching his audience last Sunday. And it talks about loving our enemies and praying for them. But before we go deeper into that, we have this little story of a husband and a wife, both of whom were doctors. One, a doctor of theology, and the other, a doctor of medicine. When their doorbell was rung and the maid answered, the inquirer would often ask for the doctor. The maid's interesting reply was, do you want the one who preaches? or the one who practices. I guess this story resounds very well with our gospel for today, the demand of our liturgy for this Sunday. Maybe it's easier no, to preach about forgiveness and to hear about it, but when to practice it is indeed very difficult. We need for extra or special grace from the Lord to be able to realize this. And that is, in fact, the challenge of our readings for today, bringing before us two ways of proceeding, the one which calls for achieving what one wants through violence, and the other which calls for a peaceful way of getting what one is entitled to. There are ways these ways are narrated in the first reading of today and in the persons of Abishai and David. Abishai knows no other way but the way of violence to achieve his goal. Though David is aware of this way, he prefers to choose instead the way of peace and concord. Abishai's way would have polarized or split David's kingdom it would have resulted in destroying the very thing that David hoped for. Aware of this, David chooses the other way, namely, the way which seeks to acquire through peace, friendship, and forgiveness. This is also the way that Jesus proposes in the gospel text of today, when he invites those who are willing to listen to him to love their enemies, and to respond to violence with nonviolence. As a matter of fact, Jesus goes even further when he challenges his listeners to bless and pray for the very ones who are violent towards them. This challenge is what Paul, too, places before the Corinthian community and us in the second reading today. When he makes a comparison between the first Adam the new, and the new Adam, if the first Adam was limited, the new Adam, who is Jesus Christ, is beyond limit. If the first Adam was of the earth, Jesus Christ is from the heaven. And if the first Adam was physical and made from dust, Jesus is spiritual and from above. The challenge then is to be imitators of the new Adam, Jesus Christ. All too often, nonviolence is seen as cowardice and weakness, and aggression and violence as courage and strength. I wonder if you would also agree with that. However, this is far from the truth. It is in reality the aggressive and violent who are weak. Come to think of it, it is actually the aggressive and the violent who are weak. To seize by, power, by force or violence, the objects or goals we desire is often to destroy the very thing we expect to gain. This is true on the macro picture of international disputes and also on the micro picture of family dynamics. How do we settle conflicts 
or disagreements even among our communities, especially in the family? Is it by using violence, no? uh, uh, imposing your will on the other? Or is it by uh, making dialogue, no? peaceful way of settling things? It is sad, however, that on both these levels, the way of Abishai has prevailed, and the majority seems to go that way. One does not need to look further than the nearest newspaper or television channel relaying news to see how true this is. So many try to force their way through various degrees of physical, political, and emotional violence. We find it difficult to resist the temptation to force our will on others, to retaliate and even the score. However, as the readings today point out, there is an alternative way. This is the way of restraint that David practices. It is the way of forgiveness and nonviolence advocated by Jesus. This brings to mind what I read before, which says, He who conquers others may be strong, but he who conquers himself is wise. That's wisdom from above. No? Different kind of wisdom which the world differently no, teaches us. However, this alternative requires imaginative discernment of God at work in the midst of our own actions. Qualities of compassion, righteousness, faithfulness, and trust will appear only when we give up our own attempts to force the future and instead choose partnership with God. Because we are too in a hurry to find immediate results, we want to force our will to do things. No? But we cannot wait for God's time when to settle things and allow things to be settled. So in our own, we, in, order, in, in looking to choose for partnership with God, who constantly gives us our future as a gift and bids us receive it rather than grasp it. I think that's the point. In our own modern experience, the tendency is to separate human and divine agency in dealing with the issues of violence and power. This are those, there are those of us, on the one hand, who expect God to make moral decisions for us or to take the crucial moral actions. We pray for righteousness, peace, and justice, but do nothing to enable it. So let's leave everything to God, no? We pray to God and let God do everything. But God works in us and through us. He cannot do all things by himself. Though he can do, it, do that, but he wants us to make collaboration with him. On the other hand, there are those of us who imagine that human resources and social action alone, alone are adequate to build the future. We trust only those possibilities that emerge out of empirical data or rational analysis. We do not trust that God is also at work, so relying solely on human effort. And we cannot do that without God's guidance. Thus, the challenge before us is to take to heart the way of peace that David took rather than the way of violence advocated by Abishai. It is to take the way advocated by Jesus who was shown in and through the cross that the way of nonviolence and forgiveness is indeed not only the higher way but the more practical way. In doing so, we will follow the new Adam who even in the face of seeming defeat, defeat and death has the ability to give victory and life. We have heard always Pope Francis, no? Who would tell us, if we cannot, uh, though we are different and many, can we not just coexist with one another peacefully? No? He even wrote in his encyclical letter, Fratelli tutti, no? Surelli tutti, we are all brothers and sisters to one another. 
why don't we have to fight in order to, to, to win over the other? I guess it's one of the American presidents who said this. No? The best way to win over an enemy is not to overcome them. But what do we do? Make friends with them. And Jesus has shown that to us. If, you have no, if everybody is your friend, do we still have enemies? No more. No? So if only we live by the tenets of our Christian faith, then this world will become a better place for all of us to live in. So we pray for peace, no? And may that peace truly begin in us and through us. Amen.